Since the dawn of time, mankind has always struggled to explain where we came from. Hmm. The ancient Mayans believed that two feathered gods created the heavens and the earth, and that humans were made from corn. People in the Congo thought the god Mumbumbo one day puked the universe into existence. While Christians believe that everything was created by one god who did it all in only six days. <gasps> and for the longest time, creation was left completely up to religion to explain. But then, in the 1920s, it was finally time for science to get involved, when astrophysicist and priest George Lemaitre noticed something strange. The universe seemed to be expanding. Lemaitre had served in the trenches during World War I and had seen firsthand how far things move apart when they are blown up. And this got him thinking. In 1927, he decided to publish his ideas in a paper he called A Homogeneous Universe of Constant Mass and Increasing Radius, Accounting for the Radial Velocity of Extragalactic Nebulae. A title which I think we can all agree is pretty damn catchy. But the scientific community at the time was set in its ways. So when George showed them his work, he didn't get the response he was looking for. <laughs> However, over the years, more evidence emerged that supported his ideas. Einstein's theory of relativity proved that the physics were possible. Edwin Hubble showed that the galaxies were indeed moving away from each other. And then in 1965, a groundbreaking discovery was made by two radio astronomers, Penzies and Wilson, when they found the cosmic microwave background radiation that proved the existence of a massive explosion throughout the universe. But it was only when the BBC decided to rebrand the paper to the Big Bang Theory that George's ideas went mainstream and it blew people's minds. And now today, Georges Lemaitre's Big Bang Theory is widely regarded as the best idea of the origin and evolution of the cosmos. But how exactly does the Big Bang Theory explain the creation of the universe? Well, to answer that, we'll have to go back 13.9 billion years to a time before time even existed, to the nothingness before creation, when everything that could ever exist was the size of a single atom that, for reasons we don't understand, violently exploded. In the first trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the temperature peaked at a toasty 180 million trillion trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Only subatomic particles like quarks, the building blocks of atoms, could survive in this radioactive soup. Less than one billionth of a second has passed and the universe has grown to the size of a grapefruit, but it's already starting to cool down. As the universe reaches one second old, the first and simplest element is able to form. Hydrogen and it changes everything. For around one billion years, the universe was a bit like you, an enormous bloated void full of gas, with absolutely nothing going on. Until suddenly, bright lights started to appear in the darkness. The clouds of hydrogen had become so massive that they had begun to generate their own gravity and were slowly being drawn together to create stellar nebulas. Inside, under the immense pressure and heat of their own mass, the hydrogen atoms were forced into new 
nuclear fusion, giving birth to the first stars. And these nuclear furnaces created the perfect conditions for hydrogen to be converted into more complex elements like helium, carbon, oxygen and iron. Basically, all the things you need to create life. During this process, all the naturally occurring elements of the periodic table were created. Every atom of everything that has ever existed first began life in the burning core of a star. Even today, hydrogen still makes up 74% of the universe. Helium 24 and all the other elements combined make up only 2% of the total matter in the universe. But the star's role is far from over. They also helped to spread these key elements throughout the universe. As it ages over billions of years, burning through all of its hydrogen fuel and converting it into heavier elements, it begins to cool. Until the nuclear reaction that powers it is no longer hot enough to withstand the forces of gravity and it begins to collapse under its own weight. Some go out with a fizzle while others turn supernova and explode. Scattering elements into space where they can be pulled in by the gravity of other stars to form galaxies. Some of these rocks come together and create the moons and planets of a solar system. And if the conditions are just right over billions of years, as the rocks cool and fuse together, water may develop on their surface, then an atmosphere and maybe even life. And that is how the Big Bang Theory explains how the universe and everything within it was created. So the next time you're feeling down, just remember that you are made of stardust. You still won't have any friends though. <laughs>